Did you know that you can make your own medicinal remedies using six medicinal flowers that you can grow in your garden? On top of my list of medicinal flowers to grow in your garden, we got a mighty calendula. Calendula is an incredible flower to have in your garden. It's a companion plant for many vegetables, but also it attracts predatory insects like overflies or ladybirds that predate on pests so you have a natural pest control without having to use chemicals. When you pick up the flower, make sure to include the green resin in bottom because it contains much of the medicine. I tend to dry the flowers facing down so they maintain the shape. Once fully dry, you can just add them to a jar and cover it with your favorite edible oil and leave them to infuse for at least a month before straining it and using it straight on your skin or for any salad dressing. It will be jam-packed with vitamins, antioxidants and antimicrobial properties. Alternatively, you can infuse a carrier oil with your flowers and use natural beeswax or extract your own if you have the chance to know a beekeeper. Melt it down, mix it together and make your own skin salve that will be absolutely amazing for any cut, bruise or irritation on your skin. At the end of the season, just simply leave a few flowers to dry out and they will produce seed heads that you can either save or leave to self-seed in an area for next year and new calendulas. Coming up next, we got the holy grail of stress relief, lavender. Lavender is such an amazing plant to have in your garden because it repels mosquitoes and many more unwanted bugs. And this is why we placed a massive plant of lavender behind our pond. Also, it attracts a huge variety of beneficial insects like butterflies or bumblebees, which are essential for a well-balanced ecosystem in your garden. You can pick up the flowers when fully open or still closed, and you can use them in a couple of ways, like making a bouquet and keeping that in your bedroom, as it helps to relax and fall asleep, or hang the bouquet upside down until fully dry, and then you can detach the flowers from the stem add them to a jar and cover it with your favorite carrier oil like argan oil or coconut oil and after one month of infusion you can strain the whole mixture and use a few drops daily on your hair or on your skin to relieve symptoms of stress or anxiety. Just remember not to throw away your leftover stems or flowers that fall over because you can add them to small pouches or small bags and store them in between your clothes to add a nice fragrance. On the next spot of healing plants to grow in your garden, we got marigold. Marigolds are an amazing companion plant to have in your garden, and I tend to plant them mainly with tomatoes and basil, just because they've got a symbiotic relationship and they help repel harmful nematodes that could damage the tomato plant. But they also attract a huge variety of pollinators they help pollinate your plant and they create a sort of barriers around your main crops so they're less likely to be targeted by pests. In this polytunnel we planted marigold pretty much all over the place just because they have such potent healing properties you can dry the flowers and infuse them in olive oil for three to four weeks and then strain this oil and mix it with melted beeswax to create your own ointment, which is absolutely great to treat skin conditions like eczema or even sunburn. Also, to save the seeds for the next season, you can just leave a few flower heads to dry on the plant and remove them when fully dry to then have brand new seeds adapted to the climate condition of your area to sow for the next season. This massive plant in front of me, full of bees, it's borage. You can eat both leaves and flowers of this plant, and the flowers actually taste like cucumbers, and you can use the old leaves as a mulch for almost any plant, as they are jam-packed with vitamins and minerals. It's a great companion plant to have in the garden, attracting a variety of beneficial insects, but also you can use the tender leaves to make tea, which is great for symptoms of cough, fever, or even respiratory issues, and make a tincture with the flowers, which means basically dry the flowers and infuse them with a strong alcohol. This could be vodka or anything high proof, 
and take a few drops every day to help with depression and anxiety. Because borage comes back every single year, make sure to decide the right placement in your garden. And also it grows quite big, so don't plant other plants too close to it. Flower number five in our list of medicinal flowers is cornflower. It's a strong plant that thrives in many different conditions and it can grow up to 60 centimeters. And if you plant a variety like this black ball cornflower, it's a showstopper and also a different things than the standard blue cornflower. To take care of this plant is pretty easy. You just have to apply dead heading, which means removing the dead heads of flowers. And I usually wait until they're fully dry. So I can either save the seeds or sprinkle them in an area and potentially have even more cornflower growing. This flower has many different benefits for your body, including relieving symptoms of congestion and constipation, but also you can make a face mask as is great for your skin by simply mixing some dry flowers with honey, turmeric, baking soda and a few other ingredients and apply it after you wash your face with warm water and keep it on for about 15-20 minutes. The next plant, which I tend to call the protector of the garden, is nasturtium. Nasturtium, it's a fully edible plant, including the leaves, the flowers and the seeds. They can be eaten raw or prepared in different methods, like we created a full video using every single part of this plant. It's an amazing plant to have in your garden, and it's also called a sacrificial crop, because basically it attracts all the pests like black flies, protecting your main crops and also creating a source of food for ladybirds. And once it's completely full of pests, you can just cut it off and dispose of the plant. The plant is packed with vitamin C, antioxidant and iron. And you can dry the seeds, grind them, mix them with sea salt and make your own spicy salt. Because back in the days, during the war, it was used as a replacement for pepper. However, not everyone likes the taste, so try it before trying to make any of the recipes. After the plant finished to flower, it will start producing seeds. They will be released all around to self-seed and you will find loads of new plants next season. So make sure to either pick them up or leave them be if you want more nasturtium to grow. I will add every recipe to the description of the video and I hope you like today's video and I'll see you next week for another episode. Thank you for watching.